Uh, yeah, my name's Clay Tyndall. This is my 13th year with Little Watt Forestry Ventures. We definitely grew from almost nothing to, to where we are now, so it's been an exciting 13 years. When I was hired, we did have forest tenure that was owned by the nation. We're probably at around 75% now of the timber harvest land base for the nation being managed through Little Watt Forestry Ventures. And yeah, they want to see us manage it all if we can, so. So Jordan Gabriel, uh, work for Little Watt Forestry Ventures. We've uh, taken on a different approach of uh, everything that the nation wanted to look at everything in the forest rather than just the trees, right, to manage for the berries, the mushrooms. We always saw the need to, to do things a little bit differently and to provide multiple values from the forest, not just timber. So there's always been that desire to, to manage that way. And having, you know, the local knowledge um, of, our, of our staff of, you know, what plants have grown in what areas, what trees have grown in what areas, and, and you know, areas that maybe trees haven't grown in the past, and now there's trees there. It does take that long view of the forest to be able to, to see how it has changed. You know, you, you don't necessarily always see it in, in five or 10 years, yeah. but if you're here for, for 50 or 60 years, you do see, see the changes in the forest. I started researching into what the elders thought back in 69 that um, they knew that we were losing our resources because they weren't allowed to manage the lands anymore. The fire wasn't in the ecosystems anymore, right, to produce all the resources that the people use for the plants, for food, for teas, medicines, and um, the mushrooms, right? Some of the research, like for the pine mushrooms, we noticed that when we did the two and a half year study with them that um, they like more of an open canopy, right? So this forest we're standing in here was part of this project because people used to pick pick pine mushrooms just up the hill away from us here. and. Right now where we're standing, I can smell them in, in here somewhere, right? We tried to open up this to make that come back here, right? To to get, see if the pine mushroom would come back into this uh, area. Now I understood why the chiefs and the elders back in the day said in 69, we're losing these resources. And now it goes to show that they are coming back. You know, a lot of these, like the, the partial harvest uh, stand we're in now, this prescription came out of the, the fuels management work we did in the past. In this case, we were able to do a similar harvest and leave a lot of the same stems behind, but not necessarily only thin from below. Okay. Um, but we also don't want to do mis other mistakes of the past where we just took all the best trees and left the future forest managers with nothing to, to manage. When we've done partial harvests in the past, We've seen a lot of release in the trees we've left behind. So that release, you know, gives us, you know, a pretty good feeling that when, when we come back here in 10 years, these trees will, will seem a lot, you know, they'll be a lot, a lot bigger, bigger and yeah. they'll, you know, give us yeah. more old growth characteristics in the stand. Yeah. I think this forest type is pretty incredible because you can see the clouds just extend all the way to the valley bottom and it's almost like we're in a cloud forest and the cedar and fir combination just reminds me of an incredibly fire managed landscape and you can see the care that trees are being taken out but the big ones are are left standing and they're providing the cover for the berries and the mushrooms and all the other values that they're trying to manage for. As we manage the forest, trying to gain knowledge of the entire forest, now it's like, well, how can we manage it all for providing those other values that the forest brought to the community as well as continuing to provide some timber value? And with the changing, you know, climates, you know, making sure that we don't lose the, the stands that are out there that have that, like, old growth value, for instance, right? Like, if there's only 10% of the forest with big trees like this, and they get lost in these catastrophic wildfires that we've been seeing for the last at least 10 years, that would be a real shame. We're 
charge of 75% of the territory now, right? Whereas we weren't even allowed back in some of these areas, but now we're allowed back in there. It makes a big difference. The trees are dying out and falling and the mushrooms disappearing. So we're hoping that, uh, you know, to find more evidence of how to make it mm -hmm. continues to grow rather than it disappearing. And I mentioned this to some of the community members and they started noticing, yeah, the trees are dying out, the mushrooms disappearing. I said, well, are we mismanaging it in a way, right, that we should be doing something different? If you're not doing anything, you're not failing, but you're not learning, right? So you, you have to, you know, you have to continually try things um, and, and do the best you can. And sometimes, you know, you might have failed for that one value, but maybe, you, you know, you all of a sudden find that it's providing a different kind of value, right? So that, that's kind of where it gets exciting. Like the things that we've always done weren't for, for the reasons and outcomes that, that we've tried to get, right? But, but continually like learning from, from what we've done, right? It's amazing, right? I take pictures and I, I send it to the groups. I said, this is where I am today, you know, looking at a different different part of the territory that we have never had a chance to explore before, right? I mean, it's 14 years since we started this, uh, you know, working here and this is where we're at right now with Clay and myself and the, and the group that we have. Um, I got into forestry what, about 40 years ago and uh, I'm still here. And like yesterday was Truth and Reconciliation Day, right? We weren't even allowed out in the forest, right? We weren't allowed to leave the reserve. We had to stay here, right? It was tough, but being a resilient group, everybody found a way to do it, right? We need to protect areas, but we also need to manage areas, right? We're trying to manage it to what everybody wants and that everybody needs for the wildlife, for the ecosystems, for the safety of the community, and for them to get cultural materials from the forest. If you put fire back into the ecosystem, it's going to be a healthier ecosystem, right? We're working, like I said, within the rules, and now we're starting to work outside the, the like current stretch rules. the rules a little bit. Yeah. Do you have any advice for practitioners who are trying to gain some of the knowledge in that space? Because it seems like very few people have that. Many people don't think of fire as a tool in civil culture anymore. Yeah. But it, um, many of the nations, it seems like they've never lost that. I, I think again for us, it was just being able to spend time in the woods and and seeing the areas where there was prescribed burning in the past and how abundant the huckleberries were in those stands. And then looking at the fires and how abundant the huckleberries were where there was natural fire. It does take a lot of driving around, you know, getting out to the, the blocks, taking a look at them, seeing what happens. If you've got the local people that have that local knowledge and they can continue to, to gather that information, it, it is possible. It takes a while and it does take, you know, those eyes out in the forest so yeah you have to have people that are that are looking for those you know not just looking to see if the, the block's fully stocked i don't think it's something though that that loggers are, are against by any means that i've seen around here they they really embrace that they're doing something new and innovative and, and looking at multiple values in the forest it might be more work and it might yeah it might be a little frustrating at times but all the comments we've had is they do really appreciate that they're, they're they are doing something new and innovative so yeah it's really cool to hear <laughs>